It's always nice to catch up with you, Paula. Thank you very Thank much you. for joining us today on The Point. Um, I really appreciate the time. We have a beautiful setting here, and we're going to have uh, a nice conversation today. You know, luckily, it is it is uh, August, and this is quite bearable. So other it than is. that, I would <laughs> it would be uncomfortable. But right now, it's perfect. It so glad nice. to be here talking to we, you. We picked a nice spot. <laughs> nice spot. So speaking of nice spot, um, recently you rolled out the Flex Plan. Yes. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Oh wow. So the Flex Plan. It's not the plan. It's Flex Path. Every time I tell someone it's a plan, then they get really worried because they think it is designed to be an absolute destination. And what it really is, it's a, it's us giving ourselves and our community a license to have a different way to solve energy um, challenges of the future. Mm -hmm. We used to build generation no matter what, and the community would grow into it. Right now, there's new things coming on the horizon. We think there's new technologies for generation. We think um, renewables will come along and be augmented by better energy storage. And we don't want to do that uneconomically. We want to make sure that we are prudent about it. And so we'll stay flexible along our path, path. and make adjustments yes. and make the right adjustments to make sure that our customers have the best opportunity at the best value. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, so let's switch paths just a little bit um, and talk a little bit air quality attainment. Yes. Um, top of everyone's mind right now. Yes. As an organization, what are what are you doing? Um, and then also from a customer's perspective, um, what can our customers do to um, reduce their emissions, reduce their footprints? Absolutely. Bit, so um, CPS Energy has been on a path to work on air quality for a very long time. We understand that um, because we have a base of fossil fuels, there has inherently been emissions that have come from some of our plants. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure it's clear that, that some do not. Nuclear has no emissions, mm -hmm. um, but we have had where coal in its um, initial states has had very significant emissions, and so does gas, but it has half the emissions. So basically, we've realized that and we've decided, for example, this year we're going to close, at the very end of the year, we're going to close some of our older uh, coal units. And we know that that's going to help emissions. What we've done is we're going to replace that capacity with gas units that will have half the emissions. We do still have some coal units. Those have all the best environmental controls, scrubbers, um, other technical equipment. We also use ultra low sulfur coal and that makes the emissions really go down significantly. But we've also added renewables. We've, and we have a thousand, over a thousand megawatts of wind, over 500 megawatts of solar. We have a huge energy efficiency and conservation plan. The best way to control everything is to not actually use more energy than you need to. Right. And so we've been on a path for the past 10 years. And really when, when we look at it, the emissions from energy have really gone down substantially. Is there more that we could do? Absolutely. But we're actually working with the city and UTSA on a baseline study because it is a community issue. We have to do our part and then we have to help the rest of the community because we've got to focus on transportation. In reality, we have a lot of cars. We're a big thriving city and we're attracting people and that's a great problem to have. But with all of the cars that are currently on the road that are not electric, there's a tremendous amount of emissions. Every time you see congestion, you're creating yes. emissions. And so that has to happen. And then our buildings are older. And so they don't really conserve energy properly. And so we all have to work together to look at those opportunities and solve them. We're in it because we're gonna share what we know, we're gonna bring in experts, we're gonna, we're gonna participate with the community, with our mayor, with um, Councilwoman Sandoval, they are really helping leading the effort at the council level. Right. But it's gonna take everyone being involved in this, so we're really excited. Yeah. So let me ask you another question of something that um, I was recently reading, and that's about Russian hackers and their intentions with um, with utilities, and both from a cybersecurity standpoint, but also physical security standpoint. Tell me what um, what CPS is doing to ensure that you all are staying, as with everything, one one step ahead. Yeah. Um, so, so I would say that we are increasing our focus on it all the time. We are. Um, in the mode of sharing 
uh, concepts and thoughts about really mobilizing um, centers where we can partner with the military and federal agencies, local um, police, and businesses. And so we're in this strategic mode of thinking about how do we do it long term. Uh, and when I say long term, in the next couple of years. Uh, and then underneath them is a, is a growing and emerging chief integrated security officer. Under her, we focus on physical and cyber. Cyber is the hottest, right. difficult place. But we have $11 billion in assets. Mm -hmm. So we think about security in terms of keeping our assets safe. So we do everything from uh, defending ourselves in our firewalls. Mm -hmm. I mean, we get tens of thousands of attacks from a wide range of entities. We can tell that they could be uh, a sovereign country. Mm -hmm. We could tell they might be an individual. It could be um, a kid interested in seeing if they can pierce in, mm -hmm. but we are in defense all the time. Mm -hmm. The Russian hacker threat actually ties back to something that happened a year ago, and it's the same focus, the, the wanna cry virus, mm -hmm. but it's out there, it's been out there. We've defended for that for over a year, and we're in good shape, but we do not taunt our um, adversaries. Mm -hmm. um, we know that while we run a energy system 24-7, 365, we have operational responsibilities, there are some people who that's their number one job, is to try to infiltrate systems. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we stay diligent, focused, we educate throughout our organizations, and it's just gonna increase over time. So on that note, um, in closing, fascinating woman, fascinating times. Tell me about what are some of your top priorities um, over the next several months, several years, your, whatever you consider. So it's, it's, it's wide. We have, we have a complex organization. We have 3,000 plus people that serve a million, almost million, uh, 1.5, 1.5 million people. And so it's a constant barrage of having everything in balance. But I would say that we are very, very focused still on moving where our customers need us to be, to, to keep evolving, not delivering services the way we always have. We've started a refresh on our focus groups, asking our customers what they think and what what they want us to to, to provide them in terms of options, um, information, opportunities to conserve energy. We have all types of ways and hints um, and tools that they can use. So deepening our connection to customers, listening more than we talk, and making sure that in turn, inside our organization, that we're really pumping up our um, thirst for learning, learning from others, learning from our customers, learning from the industry, and then flipping that around to be um, a, a company that shares thought leadership. Mm -hmm. We want to hear from our customers and we want to make sure that we have the right and the privilege to be their service provider in decades into the future. Because this is a thriving city. Um, I brag about San Antonio across the nation and across the globe. We've got something special here and we're here to support that. We do have something special here. Yeah. And you're special. Thank you for joining Thank you. me today. Um, always enjoy our chats. Um, and Uh-oh, here comes the sun, though. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's time. It's time. Very good. Thank you. All right. Very timely. Thanks again. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>